See, he turned. He turned the little bugger and he looked at us. He saw the camera. He wants to be on YouTube. <laughs> you know, the, the, one of the trucks, I don't think I filmed it, one of the trucks, and he turned to the truck and started chasing it. And that's when I turned the tuk-tuk round. Now, now a damn car is here. So that's when I turned the tuk-tuk round and thought, now be facing away from the elephant in case he, he gets it, you know, a bit gnarly and decides, whew, nice. That'll probably do us now. That's <laughs> one elephant, that's enough. I don't want to see any more elephant. No, we do, we do want to see more elephants. And it would be really cool to see a leopard. I don't think you'll see a leopard, they're very shy. Okay, more elephants. Take two. So there's a, a lot of foliage on the ground and ahead of us there's another elephant also kind of blocking the road a little bit. But I think we've got to go by. Turn the camera, Michelle. Yeah, this fella's got nowhere to go. He looks, you know, they see you, they look back, they're such intelligent animals, such intelligent animals. And he's looked back at us as if to say, are you coming through or not? But I'm a bit wary. And hopefully he's stepping off. I think he is turning off the road. Would be nice if someone joined us. You see the way, we waited for ages for someone to join us and then eventually we decided to go for it and sort of hammer past the elephant. And within about a hundred yards, somebody, the only vehicle we've seen on our side of the road today came and almost sort of drove me into the, uh, into the hard shoulder. Okay, this guy is zigzagging uh, across the road. I'm not sure if it's a guy or a girl, but it's, uh, it's being a bit, again, a bit menacing. I'm staying well back. Are you filming? Yeah. So again, barely a hundred yards, another elephant blocking the road. And we're on a bit of a blind bend. I don't wanna, I can't go on the opposite side of the road past this one. So I'm hoping somebody will, somebody will come along a bit bigger than us and we can pass by in the slipstream. I think I've watched a few too many videos, elephants, tossing tuk-tuks which which is a thing so uh but i think they get a little, a little bit more the anxious the fact that we're sort of stalking it sort of um, maybe if we just gone straight by but this one's on a blind bend i just don't want to go wide around this bend um oh there's one car <laughs> now see the elephant keeps stepping out into the road now he's kind of turning to kind of turning to face us as well. Go on elephant, just get off the road. We'll probably find one will come out of this bush over here in a minute. There's a path look as well, there's dumb. Ah. ah, motorbike. He's going round. <sighs> Lord, if, if the motorbike can do it, we can do it. Frightening. He had his fifth leg out as well. I noticed that it was a big daddy. <laughs> Let's get up into fourth gear. He was a he was a big fella, wasn't he? He was, and he, and he just and started off to coming towards us a little bit. You know, we want to show you elephants today. I think two will do me. I think so. I hope I'm not too anxious and my filming's not too wobbly. Oh, I've missed it completely. <laughs> I think what we might do on the next elephant, if there is another one, is just keep going. Because there's so little traffic out here, and I think we intimidate the elephant by sort of hanging back. They're very intelligent, they see you back here you know, waiting. 
So I think what we'll do with the next one, I hope it's the right thing if there is another one, just to keep going and pass it like the, uh, the locals seem to be doing. Now there are buffalo just ahead of me here. And as we've stopped, they're all looking at me like, what are you doing? Oh, they're leaving. I, I did wonder if one of the, the big fella here it looks like he was going to come and charge me. We're on a bit of a blind bend here, so I've got to be careful. Another elephant. And we have stopped. Oh, I'm so windswept from driving this tuk-tuk. We have swapped, but we're going to have to get past this. It's a vehicle checkpoint, and I think the guy who's going to be checking us is a bit bigger than I expected. This is a big boy. He's a huge, great big elephant. Look at the size of this thing. He's a mammoth. Mammoth elephant. It's a big guy, huh? Wow. Look at the size of that elephant. He is huge. Amazing. I never thought we'd see, you know, I, a friend of mine said he'd gone through this park sometime and only saw one elephant, so um, it's quite amazing. Hey? No, get off. Get, let's get going then. No, he's coming. He's coming to check us. It's time to go. He waved us on. <laughs> Look at these two strutting down here. You look so good. No leopards, no? No elephants, leopards? No? Back here. Okay. No. Okay. Thank you, Stuti. Thank you. I love it that we're sort of worried about going through the Yala Park and, you know, seeing all the wildlife. And then there's a courting couple just strolling. Thank you. Bye. Just strolling along the road like it's every day for them. They must see these elephants so frequently. But Michelle and I are just remarking, and there are houses all, all through here as well. But we just saw two young children, I, I didn't catch it on camera, they were only sort of maybe seven or eight years old, walking hand in hand together back from school on their own. And I wonder what happens when they encounter, because it was only a, a, a few, few hundred meters away from where that big elephant was. I wonder what the advice the parents give them when they meet uh, wildlife. They, they must be just so used to it. We've been warned many times to be cautious of the elephants and it's kind of put us a bit, what can I say, it's kind, kind of made us feel a bit wary, Michelle. Yeah, I think we're a little, maybe a little bit too cautious, but uh, yeah, we're looking out for it. But I don't think the locals are at all bothered <laughs> by whether they see an elephant or not. It's so beautiful out here as we come away from the coast, the rice fields. Now I just stopped at a rice mill. I'll drop some video in here. I don't think the sound will be very good. We're just, um, you get the light here. We just stopped. I see this guy actually milling rice. Hello. So, prima wheat flour. Wow. This? This is the different different grade, yeah? Right. Milling. So this one is like like rice. Right. So down. Ah. This is more fine. This one is more like uh, powder. 
wild rice. On the roadside, the guy is um, processing rice. So it's a rice rice mill. So we've seen all the rice paddies. There's rice paddies all, all around. That guy's working in there. Um, he's got a whole bunch of equipment milling rice. Ah, another. So look, here is the rice. Here's the raw rice. White, white, red, red, red color. On the approach to Ella, the hills are steep, and we're not getting out. We're not getting out of second gear. I'm kind of glad that I've recently filled up with petrol because uh, this is going to be a bit of a gas, gas guzzle going up this hill. I don't think I'm going to get out of second gear. Oh, damn. You don't want a truck like this to pull out in front of you. You don't want a truck like that to pull out in front of you and drop your speed from 20 kilometers to two kilometers. And what was I about to say? Oh, about the curb stones. You're in a, you're in a three-wheeler. So if, if your back wheel drops down one of these uh, little side curbs, it's not going to be a pretty uh, outcome, so you've got to be careful of that also. Right, third gear, we're away. Get to third gear, then you've got to bend. <laughs> then you have a bend and you've got to slow down. And it hasn't, it's been sort of this misty rain the whole journey now. For, it's been an hour, I would say. The whole journey from the coast for us has taken close to five hours, and it's, it's a bit exhausting, to be honest. A bit exhausting. I mean, I'm fine, but my Lord, I am looking forward to the end of this journey. Back to second. The views down here would be epic if you could see more than 10 feet. So we're in Batula and uh, just dropped the camera down because we went for a checkpoint. I am bad. So we, we stopped, got more fuel. So another 1500 rupees. And I'm not letting the tank go down. I'm not letting the tank go much below halfway because it's just safer. We've got our reserve tank as well, but it's just a lot easier if I if I keep the tanks. Um, once it gets a little bit below halfway, I'll try and find somewhere to fill it. And it's usually costing somewhere around about between 1,500 and 2,000 rupees a pop. So driving up today, we've filled up twice. Both are about 1,500 rupees, um, but we're full now. So what's the name of the town? Batula. So we think the name of the town is Bat Batula. Um, we're actually going to end the video here because the next video will start in Ella. For now, that's enough. There's been a lot happening today from rainstorms, elephants, uh, no crocodiles, but buffaloes. It's been a lot of fun. We will see you in the next episode. This is the road I had to go up last night. Now, that's the good bit of the road. That's the good bit, and that is complete wreck next to a building site. On the other side of that building site,